Good day, uh, dear guests. Uh, I am the session moderator. My name is Cecil Nurahmetova, the director of the department. Before we start our session, I would like to announce some administrative issues. So here we have QR code. You can sign to our Telegram channel where you can find the speeches of our uh, speeches and presentations of our speakers as well as photos. Also, please pay attention that we have emergency exits so that we have between C34, C33 blocks and we have also near the elevators. So we would also would like to thank our golden partners, Visa, Freezam, Holding Core and ITS companies. Now let me introduce you our speakers, Viktor Kavalent, who is a partner and regional director in uh, services in Central Asia with regard to uh, sustainable issues. Then, uh, Johan Berner, who is the Deputy General Director on Technology and Operation Activity of ERG, then Nurjan Kapdoldanov, Jassel Damun, Deputy Chairman of the Board. We also have online speakers, Peter Wright, who is the General Director of European Energy uh, Stock Exchange, and Susan Velis Eller, the Manager in Latin America, uh, Regional Interaction Vera. Now let us start with the following thing. Uh, ETS is one of the mechanisms for achieving carbon neutrality in Kazakhstan, but we have the feeling now that it is, uh, let's say, stopped somehow. We had only 11 tradings in Kazakhstan on buying uh, of uh, carbon units, one euro per ton. However, in European Union, the number of tradings is twice, uh, 20 times higher. Today, we will speak about improving the situation in Kazakhstan. We'll speak about the platform to have the integration of uh, local and international carbon markets, especially when we speak about ETS of European Union. The importance of this project is uh, really uh, interesting. We know that we are going to have CBAM, uh, and uh, according to the data of World Bank, in case of, in case of expansion of uh, goods categories that are under CBAM, the losses for Kazakhstan could be up to 1.5 billion um, dollars. And thank you so much for joining our session. We understand this is a, a final session today. And uh, Victor, I want to ask a question to you. What do you think are the prospects of the development of ETS in Kazakhstan? And what do you think, uh, how uh, we can uh, develop this area so that to achieve our goals. And I want to congratulate you with the awards. I know that you personally contributed a lot and we hope for continuation of our cooperation, not only in green financing, but also in the carbon uh, issues. Yes, you know the carbon market requires financing. Thank you so much. I have made uh, several notes so that to use them when I'm answering the question. The worst is and uh, we know that Kazakhstan's system and emissions trade it was launched uh, um, and uh, it was been modernized during 10 years. There was a, re a relaunch and then in uh, 2018 that we had benchmarking if I'm not mistaken and then the external um, participants were excluded. So where do we see some special things that can boost and increase the efficiency of the system itself and the emissions reduction. So the lack of the pebble uh, quote distribution and then over provisions of this uh, quotes that is very weak um, price channel for the unit of carbon at the secondary market. The price is uh, the same, 500 um, tenga per ton. Of course, it does not simulate the business as the mechanism to reduce the emissions of greenhouse uh, gases. We have ecological environmental code and they're, they're about one and a half percent of the upper cap, the seller F factor. And also uh, since 2026, uh, next period where we have the distribution of this quote, it can be increased up to 5%. So 5% uh, reduction for the economy, it will be quite painful. And um, within the frameworks of our calculations, the experts and us, we forecast the deficiency of those quotes. And uh, why? Because, uh, well, so this fine 
percent uh, volume of reduction, that will be the situation that such operators of installations of uh, the building and capacity or of the lounge and the production, they will not be able to buy this additional quota of the market because there will be none. And there will be in the situation where they need to finish the production or violate the environmental legislation to pay the funds because there will be no quotes. And at the same time, the authority and the operator here, the, it was announced that the plans on imp um, implementing this Pebble Coast, it will be there. So probably since um, it will happen in 2026 to approve this plan. And so it will be clear that it will happen and to calculate this initial auction for the year or for the whole phase and to provide the permanent access with a transparent timetable schedule of those trades. Last Friday, I announced that during the conference of Ecoshare that this primary auction of this Pebble Quote, it is important to support it with the mechanism of um, reserve of the market stability that will balance the supply and demand because without this mechanism and forecasted deficiency of quote, the price will grow significantly. It will be very painful, like seven, ten, ten hundred times more energy sector, cement, uh, petroleum products, and uh, high carbon industries, it will be absolutely impossible, like mission impossible. So what I wanted to say that it is recommended to have this price corridor, uh, let's say the ceiling and the floor, the minimum and the trigger one, and how to get it. I think it can be called somehow like the intervention of the government to the mark, into the market, but we don't have this market, so probably we will be able to launch it somehow. The minimum price can be set up by the regulator, for instance, if this um, national MAC that curve, that regulator can take a look where there is that level of the price that is needed to provide this uh, um, convenient conditions. So it is five, seven dollars per ton uh, for the company to have economical sense to implement such projects. And the trigger price, this top one, it is launched usually and set up again by the regulator in order to have this uh, mechanism of stabilization of the market to set it up. Because when the price goes up to, uh, to the moon, so there's operators all of the separate reserve, which is not in this cap of the annual decrease and in reduction where they just provide this pebble quotes to the market. The government does not say that business forget about it. We will provide this quote forever for you. No. If you do not contribute into this cap, please go to the market, to the government and buy this additional quotes for money. So that's how we provide this market aspect of this mechanism. It works in European Union and in other countries. So the market aspects are provided. So you should shut down or pay the money. And uh, you need to go pay money for this quote. So for the enterprise, it is quite painful. It is the price, but still it allows to provide this market pressure in order to reduce these emissions to provide the secondary market with this carbon units as well as to fulfill that carbon fund, the idea of which is in, uh, added in the CSD. So basically, another important aspect here that if we have the uh, very significant boost that will this uncontrolled flow of this units according to the Paris Agreement, not of those offset by CAM units that are there in the market and will have a negative impact on this objective. So here we have a proposal to set up some kind of limit of, of offsets for the operators to fulfill their obligations at the market because so far we do not have any limitations. So basically 100% of your obligations and commitments can be covered with this offset. But it has no demand at the market and it is cheaper to buy this offset than the national cost because we do not have the market. So 10% um, of your obligations can be covered by this market. So it can be considered as the stimuli for covering your obligations. Probably I would emphasize that um, in order to 
increase this efficiency. The mechanism that you have offered, I think we work unanimously and uh, uh, we can work on this and to think about it to choose the best tools for relaunching this carbon market and for this restart it can be realized at the platform of AIF FC, we have this independent legislation, we have stock exchange and following international standards and principles. We can continue this list on and on and on, and these factors are the key moments for the restarting. As I've already mentioned in the beginning of this session about the possible losses at the European market because of the CPM, and I think that we need to continue moving forwards this, not since 2026, but a little bit earlier. I think we will listen to the operator too. I would like to give the floor to Mr. Berner because these proposals are oriented to the business. Uh, so, Mr. Jochner Berner, how can we regulate in order not to uh, kill the business, but to regulate this transfer to the green economy and green policy? And the ERG will have to face that C pump to pay for it, basically. Yes, thank you so much, Asel. Um, just a few comments in the beginning. Of course, the sector at the world level is one of the uh, key vectors, and uh, in particular, no, CO2, 8% of all emissions uh, corresponds to the mining industry. Uh, so we as ERG company, we look at it very seriously. We have the commitment and we are interested in the carbonization uh, um, of our activities and we in contribute a lot here and of course um, this year we have published our policy on decarbonization. We have announced our ambitions and uh, that uh, by 2050, we want to be uh, neutral, and it is very ambitious, yes, uh, but that is that is required. And uh, we have been working on our strategy in details. At the same time, of course, we would like to mention that uh, Kazakhstan is not uh, in the best uh, position when it comes to decarbonization because our economy is um, is uh, very uh, concerning for each uh, GDP. We need lots of CO2. And here in Kazakhstan, that's a great challenge for all the participants of the economy. And we need to take it into consideration, especially when we determine the price, identify the price, so for the company to be still competitive further on. When it comes to the system on uh, emissions uh, trade, uh, we think as a business, we think that first of all, what's important, that is uh, predictability. We understand the mechanism, we understand the corridor, the price for CO2, that we will have an opportunity to plan our investment, our events uh, that are needed for decarbonization because without it, it will be difficult if we change the regulations every time and all the suggestions, the activities, it will be difficult, especially in such uh, industry as mining where the investment cycle is really long. Our investment cycle is pretty long. It's not a year, that several years ahead and if we make a decision it has the impact on our activity for decades. So that is why this predictability is one of the important elements. Connecting to this, uh, if we talk about pricing, here we should take a look at which level to identify this price for CO2, as I've already mentioned, Kazakhstan is a very energetic um, consuming, and we should take it into consideration that the price will never will not be at the level as in Europe. Um, otherwise, the players of our economy would lose competition at the international arena. And we need to identify how this market works 
at which level and which corridor has been identified. Another important aspect, who participates at the market? We think the wider coverage is in the economy, the better it is. Um, those who are in responsible for the emissions, they participate, they contribute, and they, play for, they pay for these emissions, including transport, agriculture, etc. So we think that the coverage of the industry at the market on CO2 trade should be wide. So the faster it can be moved and to decarbonize, the better it is for the economy. The third that is important also for us that the support of the business, it is very important because as I've already mentioned and Victor has already said it, um, the price for CO2 and increasing of this price can be quite accelerated and we should look for the industries that are energy intensive that will help to hold the compet competitiveness and uh, support, provide the opportunity for decarbonization. The support should be there, for instance, uh, some privileges uh, and uh, um, the carbon fund and etc. So it is uh, uh, the mechanism which is everywhere in Europe and uh, also here in Kazakhstan, it can be implemented uh, during the process of decarbonization uh, to provide this grace period and so on. And of course, the market and the price for CO2, there should be the motivation for this decarbonization. Of course, it requires some efforts and there should be some mechanisms like that, that uh, this mechanism should uh, motivate. Uh, all the players. Uh, you had a question about Europe. Yes, Europe. Europe is the key market. We have lots of consumers that are in Europe. Europe is important for us. It is just one of the markets where our goods are being sold. And of course, we don't want to lose this market. We want to keep the competitiveness here. But it depends on products. Speaking about some products, it can happen easier if we talk about the ferrochrom. We, be, we are the world leader, and uh, for us it will be easier to keep that place. The price for the product is pretty high, and additionally, the cost of CO2 it will not have that serious impact on the competitiveness. But if we talk about other products, uh, speaking about uh, the uh, ore uh, and aluminum as well, it will be more sensitive. And we have other markets as well. And we have China and Asia. So here we, we are the diversified company and here we have an opportunity um, but in any case uh, we should emphasize that this way would be taken by the whole world and move in the direction of decarbonization so redirect the products simply it will not help of course you need to be involved in decarbonization by yourself and to keep your competitiveness uh, in terms of new conditions. Uh, yes, thank you so much. You have mentioned, yes, the whole world is moving that direction and several markets of European Union will accept this carbon taxes or at least start thinking about it. Thank you so much uh, for your opinion and your large player in those large emitters will um, uh, implement this mechanism on reduction of greenhouse emissions and uh, we have listened to the opinions of business consulting and um, AI FC. So the next question to Nor Mr. Norjan, you are the deputy uh, chair of the management just so the moon and about 
the plans that you have, uh, how to improve the system, and uh, what can be the challenges. Hello, distinguished colleagues. Thank you so much for inviting me here. We are really happy to be here today. And as we know, the general system of quotes and trade um, of uh, carbon units is the only mechanism in the country on regulating the emissions of uh, CO2 emissions and that must have its contribution on improving the national system on the emissions trade national system. As we all know that our country has adopted international obligations and commitments uh, to reduce 15 percent by 2030. Uh, comparing to the level of 1990. Uh, so basically, um, is ST, that is the way to simulate this and to motivate and uh, determining and identifying the price for uh, this carbon. So we regulate 43 percent of all emissions in the country and the system works this way, like our colleagues have already mentioned, since uh, 2013, yes, we do understand that this system was reconsidered several times, super was supervised, and we even stopped the system for a while in order to set it up in compliance and our legislation was set up in the compliance. So basically that limit that was mentioned uh, into, in order to be included into the national plan it was 20,000 tons and uh, here we understand that indeed nowadays this system on co-distribution in the country is pretty soft and we calculate and assess special parameters and reduction, but not always we accept those national plans that are desired. And we all understand that when we accept this national plan, uh, we um, we take into consideration this economy, the oil and gas, the coal industry, and we understand that these is these are these are the enterprises in those spheres in coal and extraction and uh, according to the sectors of the industry of in the economy they are the main polluters so of course we have a choice how to uh, function here, how to operate, to how to work in the uh, sphere of course. Of course, I would agree that this market should be stricter, taking into consideration the commitments and obligations that are taken. And uh, if we talk here about this stage, if we don't start doing it, so by 2030 we will have to consider the dynamics and uh, which means they will have to accelerate our way to the reduction and will have great influence on business. There are different factors but in general and this is my view and as you have said uh, we all uh, speak about the same issue business and some other representatives but in general we agree that we need to do this part and it shall be tougher and stricter but at the same time we need to take into account the business inter interests thank you so much okay thank you now let us move to our online speakers. Today with us we have a very important speaker, Mr. Peter Wright, who is a CEO of European Energy Exchange, where we see the training of uh, carbon units, and Ms. Susanna Veles heller who is a senior manager of regional engagement, Vera, uh, international verification standard developer. They have clients, uh, more than 1,500 companies that are their clients. So, Mr. Wright, thank you so much for joining us. We can see you. 
in your previous uh, uh, announcement, you were speaking about global price for carbon, and nowadays we see the differentiation in prices. And before in Kazakhstan, we mentioned it's one euro in European Union, it's 100 euros. So when we implement the BAM, the process of unification of prices uh, shall be efficient too. So what measures? we can take, and if we take uh, Kazakhstan or European Union as example, do you consider the linking of two systems so that the price would be kind of similar? What is your interest if you want to come to Central Asian market? Thank you very much for having me, and uh, thank you for organizing this conference. And uh, it's important that the topic of carbon pricing is addressed uh, throughout the world. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with EX, we are the biggest power exchange in the world. And we are the home of auctions for the EU emissions markets for all uh, European countries. And it's great to see that many uh, new countries are considering uh, pricing of carbon as the best pool of uh, reducing emissions. The number is continuously increasing and uh, the systems around the world differ quite significantly. From an economic point of view, one global carbon price would clearly be the most beneficial for the global societies because it would lead to the most efficient allocation of carbon mitigation efforts throughout the world and thereby less distortion for business who operate beyond national borders. Uh, the carbon border adjustment mechanism that you mentioned is in this way only a correction mechanism. It is sort of the second best uh, solution. Uh, the better way of getting to that ultimate goal would be actually the linking of emission trading systems throughout the world, just like uh, Europe has done with the Swiss system, for example. Uh, so EU and Swiss do have separate uh, systems, but they are linked, and therefore they're the better alternative. But it obviously needs a political will uh, to do so, so that all partners can agree on it. What is it that we as EEX can contribute to this is number one, we can share our experiences in the carbon markets. We've been in this market for more than 15 years and we can help design the schemes that are emerging around the world so that they can be better harmonized and therefore easier linked at a later stage. That is uh, what we have been doing in other parts of the world. We've just introduced uh, uh, two years ago, the carbon scheme for New Zealand uh, and also there, there is a cap and trade mechanism now established where EEX provides the market for it. From our experience, the uh, significantly reducing the free allocation to the benefit of the auctioning part of the market is a vital role to really develop uh, in emissions trading system over time. Uh, for example, in the EU uh, ETS, all new sectors that are added are 100% auctioned in their uh, certificates. The second biggest component I would say that is important in establishing a mechanism is to open it up for also intermediaries like brokers, banks, they can provide the initial liquidity that is necessary to really establish a secondary market uh, that can also be used uh, as an underlying for derivatives market, which would be another important step so that people can hedge their emission needs in advance. Uh, as I said, our guiding vision is to link uh, carbon markets that we can connect them in different worlds uh, and provide the infrastructure so that uh, we can do this in collaboration with local partners. And Kazakhstan is, is a good example in this case where we have been involved 
in various activities with the local stakeholders and will continue to support them. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. Uh, before asking the question on uh, voluntary market, I want to give the floor to Victor because we want to finish with the CBOM issue. Victor had a comment, so Victor, please. Yes, I had one uh, small but I think important comment um, speaking about CBAM. You know, for our uh, exports in producers, um, uh, European CBAM is not, uh, they don't afraid of, uh, they are not afraid of uh, European CBAM, but I think it will give its impact and maybe the similar mechanism will appear in the other uh, countries that are important for our exporters. For example, let's take China. You see this uh, chain. CBAM provides for the following. If the importer that imports uh, high carbon products to European, if they paid at their own market, then this uh, entity uh, cannot pay it, uh, they can import it to EU, or they can uh, purchase the certificate but for a lower price. Let us take example, uh, let us say China as an example. It means, for example, the Chinese producers that are exporting to Europe, and for China, Europe is the largest market, their products in Europe becomes uh, more expensive. Therefore, their costs will be higher. And of course, if we compare it with the importers to China, these importers will be less competitive. Uh, so what they will do, they will protect their producers from importers of cheaper products. So they will introduce the similar CBAM or analog of CBAM in their country. And for Kazakhstan, this will be the big issue. And this is one of the main reasons why we shall not be afraid, and uh, we shall not be afraid only, let's say, European CBAM. We might see some other consequences uh, in other countries. Thank you so much, Victor, for this comment. Let us continue. Uh, Mr. Wright, you are saying that these are trades at the market. What are your motives, and um, how actually do you look at this market from your exchange point of view? Voluntary carbon market. Uh, there has been a lot of criticism recently on voluntary carbon markets. We, as at the EEX, we actually see it as a good and useful complementary tool of addressing climate change with the use of uh, the market instruments that have been introduced by uh, governments. It can indeed help to uh, generate much more needed private funding into low carbon technologies and in economic development of uh, low carbon technologies. But in order to effectively scale this market, we believe that a, a greater degree of standardization is needed in the voluntary carbon market. The exchange contract that we have listed for these voluntary carbon markets is one attempt to get to this standardization so that uh, a large community can agree on a few uh, standard products to be traded so that it can create liquidity rather than having to deal with individual projects. So in our view, these voluntary carbon markets should not be regarded as an alternative to government action, but uh, there are no alternatives to carbon markets which are based on legislation. And voluntary carbon market can be a precursor in the development of a market and a step stone in that direction. So that is something we observe in, in different countries worldwide, especially in Asia, where developing of a national approach in the voluntary carbon market is a prerequisite. So for all of these reasons, we will continue to, to be involved also on the voluntary side of the carbon markets. We will follow these developments very closely and support both the uh, establishment of new government markets as well as the emerging standardized voluntary carbon markets. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rice. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, the most important is standardization. And today we have Ms. 
Haller with us, uh, the representative of Vera. Recently, we hear the criticism with regard to this offset mechanism, its implementation. What do you think? Is it time now to revise this mechanism and, in general, this offset credit uh, so that to prevent some manipulations at the market? Ms. Haller, the floor is yours now. for the invitation. I'm very pleased to, to be here. Um, well, the voluntary carbon market has been evolving for the past 16 years. I mean, this was an answer for a CDM market that was being a little bit slow and that was experiencing some uh, bottlenecks. So the voluntary carbon market was born to present, as Peter said, an alternative and a complement to those regulated markets. Since then, we have been evolving and we have been changing. I mean, the market is not the same as we started working with. Uh, the market has been evolving, creating uh, new methodologies, researching new science, um, researching how to improve the registries, how to combine the efforts with the private sector. So it is a time for change. It is a time for improvement. There is a time also for inside criticism. We need to understand that the things that we did 15 years ago may not be appropriate today, but we are open to those criticisms and we have been learning from those comments I mean, we do take seriously those uh, comments and those um, uh, criticisms because we understand that each time the market grows and each time the market brings more finance to different and specific sectors, specifically to the conservation sector of forest or the restoration sectors, it will be even more complicated because those are investments that are not seen as common investments or that do not have the common revenue, for example, of a forest plantation. So the mechanisms have to be different and have to be more um, transparent and have to be understood by all the market players, not only the governments and the project developers, but also the buyers and the, um, the civil society that needs to understand what we're doing, how we're doing that, how the standards work, what is the procedure of validation and verification? Remember that this is a process that is not conducted by two stakeholders or just one player. This is a process that uh, involves at least three different um, players and one of them is the uh, validation and verification organisms that are third independent parties. Um, here we also have been introducing new um, features and new activities such as on-site visits uh, from the VERA team, from the standards. We go to the field, we understand what is going on, we understand the projects, what type of activities are happening, and also the concerns of the local stakeholders understanding how to improve our methodologies, how to improve our procedures, and how to make sure that the markets the projects and the programs we are certifying are real, transparent, traceable, and permanent in time. Um, we um, take serious this, as we mentioned before, and one proof of this is that we are part of the integrity initiatives that are being born around the world, such as the Integrity Council for the Voluntary Carbon Markets, that it's an initiative that we take very seriously. We have sent comments. We are sitting there every day having the discussions, having the conversations and see how to improve our standardization, that it's very key for this market. And also we are part of the Voluntary Carbon Markets Integrity Initiative that takes a look not only at the offer, but also the demand of the carbon credits, understanding that when a company wants to buy high quality carbon credits, they also need to implement a couple of activities before um, getting those carbon credits. Voluntary carbon markets are just one part of the equation. It's one part of the solution. It's not the ultimate solution, it's not the only solution, but it's a way to bring some finance uh, for very specific sectors and also uh, helps very specific um, 
procedures with governments because we also work with governments understanding their needs, trying to adapt our standards to the requirements or of their um, national carbon markets. And we have proof that the voluntary carbon market can be part of regulated markets such as we see in South Africa, Mexico, Colombia. Um, now we are having discussions with uh, many countries in Asia and uh, Africa and South America to help governments understand how we work and how to take advantage of the best parts of the voluntary carbon markets. Thank you so much, Ms. Heller. I wanted to ask a question, but actually you answered this question partially. You were speaking about methodologies and standards of this voluntary market. They are now wider. Um, for example, Vera just started a project on plastic products. You know, initially it shall happen on the regulated market, but uh, you said that this is uh, the voluntary market is part of regulatory market. Can, uh, let's say, voluntary markets uh, put away uh, regulated markets? Yeah, the idea is to start and to propose methodologies and procedures um, but the idea of the voluntary carbon market is never to replace the regulated uh, carbon markets or the plastic markets to replace the regulation. The idea here is to bring some chances and opportunities to countries that do not have the regulations yet and that those regulations you know take time. Um, and we are proposing early activities and early action for different markets. We do not only work with carbon, we work with biodiversity, we work with sustainable development goals, we work with plastics right now. And this is an approach that helps you understand how to work that, how to measure those uh, activities that you are implementing already even before the regulation and how to present those results in a standardized way to the governments so that they can understand what you're doing, where the challenges are, and how to start implementing those laws. Because you can write a law and you can write a regulation, but if you don't have the tools to implement that regulation or to measure the impact of that regulation, it is very hard to understand the impact that you're creating. So the idea is never to replace um, legislation or regulated markets, the idea is to help those markets and to start with early activities before the regulation is ready. Thank you so much, Ms. Heller, for this interesting talk. Um, uh, now I would say this is the second part of our session and I would like uh, to ask uh, Mr. Bergner, do you consider that carbon offsets and uh, their presence at ETS system in Kazakhstan could be the solution for the fair price scene? You know, when we had several calls with top emitters or pollutants, they were saying that yes, it, it would be good if the price would be like uh, up to this point because we are interested in implementation of this offset. What, what's your opinion? on that. Uh, yes, thank you so much for your question. Well, in general, this uh, voluntary initiative with offsets, uh, they um, have their role. Each event, it, each initiative in this uh, decarbonization activity is uh, supported and this is a positive step. Uh, in general, we consider that in the long-term perspective, Uh, the use of offsets uh, is a not reliable tool, let's say. I would consider it as a risky uh, action because there are some issues that have already been mentioned today, speaking about transparency, quality. And there are some specific expectations from our stakeholders, expectation from uh, stakeholders here in Kazakhstan, community, our employees, uh, residents of the country. And we also have 
expectations from our clients that use our products and according to, in our opinion of course they have long-term expectations that we work on the carbonization seriously and um, of course there might be some kind of additional aspects partially inside our country and inside our company we can initiate uh, some kind of uh, aspects and we can consider them as offset and uh, our vision it's not the substitute for the core carbonization of our activities of our processes yes thank you thank you so much and um, yes about this uh, link, uh, linking and uh, we are trying to um, follow this idea of the system of European Union there is the lack of uh, offset system and uh, what kind of impact would have an Erlinkin and would have uh, basically cancelled in future? Well, this question is a long term perspective for Kazakhstan because we definitely need to understand that for Erlinkin we definitely need to, to set in compliance uh, with the legislation now where. Um, uh, found foundation basically when it comes to the transparency what we've mentioned uh, on the verification of the reports there's many questions uh, here because when we check the report uh, as it was uh, shown in practice there are many different questions uh, to transparency of the reports, the correctness of and accuracy of its submission, and uh, even sometimes the questions can be raised to the authorities of validation. Sometimes the reports can be uh, turn, uh, sent back, and in order to promote it somehow, we definitely need to accept those norms, regulations, and uh, to have the trust to Kazakhstan is system um, and uh, nowadays yes we have faced such questions as I have already mentioned on standardization if we talk about offsets um, maybe during short period of time when we started um, Proving, uh, proving this projects and offsets, uh, we can emphasize that the core in those code units, for them, we have identified the period of time uh, for national plan, but when it comes to the offset contracts, those units are without any deadlines, but the price will show in future, we don't know so far, because we did not have such practice of selling these offset units, but approximately when we had this analytics, we thought that the price for offset units will be higher, taking into consideration some factors that it uh, has no deadlines, it can uh, be transferred from one national plan to another, and but I think it's too early to talk about offsets and to study the international experience and uh, to have it in compliance. Our legislation should be in compliance to work on the standards and uh, together with the ministry we are considering this offset units and uh, we have many questions on methodology on standards how to calculate it how to identify it how to verify it so nowadays we have more questions than answers and in this uh, sphere with our colleagues with other international communities we're ready to study the system and uh, as we've already mentioned about the price so in Europe the price for the quote is about eighty dollars uh, for instance in Kazakhstan is 500 tango which is one euro approximately so you see it is pretty much clear here and with such terms and conditions in order to move to this link of course that will be a great efficiency of our uh, cheap quotes and um, how our enterprises will survive um, it uh, will 
be reflected in our policy and of course uh, we will be discussing it with our colleagues and uh, um, the act and legislation. Uh, Victor, will you have any um, closing remarks? One minute. Just to say, I wanted to say that we shouldn't forget that in uh, our country we have another indicator of the price for the operators that violate the uh, install codes. According to the National Pandora's fine, there's penalty five uh, monthly years, which is this price, which is not 500 tenge, but at least we can orient on that and. Um, Nevertheless, you, we will have to pay for it, to pay uh, this, and also this principle of this just transition. And uh, even what we have now, it covers less than half of emissions. So there's just uh, transit and transfer. We, there shouldn't be that case that one or two industries uh, should not uh, carry the whole burden for others. So this uh, burden should be distributed for the maximum number of industries. So should include the maximum number of market players. So there should be that number of players involved in this activity. So we don't need to invent bicycles. So there are so many different options how to pay this carbon tax. And we have analytics that can help and assist. But uh, it will help to distribute this burden equally. And another interesting aspect that is included into the roadmap, this carbon fund, it should be created finally. And uh, its content should be the revenue on this code set and another reason reason to start this uh, payable quotes and again taxation and the key principle here with this fund it shouldn't be just the source of budget feeling uh, the government should provide the mechanism how to produce the target financing to the enterprises of Kazakhstan on decarbonization projects and then we can uh, have uh, this fair mechanism. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all speakers. Uh, thank you so much to those who joined us online. Very valuable ideas. I wanted to invite you tomorrow. Tomorrow we will continue the discussion on this question within the frameworks of Astana International Forum and Congress Center. Our session will be called Renewables and Development of the Carbon Market in the Context of Carbon Neutrality. And uh, the heads of um, Zdar will be there from uh, Arabic uh, Emirates and the regional directors on energy of the uh, region, uh, EBRD and uh, UNDP. Thank you. Please visit us tomorrow. Thank you.